Well, without much ado, Ashley and Tony, so I'm going to hand it over uh, to you guys. All right. God bless. Thank you, Samuel. Let me yes. Stop sharing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, hi. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley. My husband's sitting in another room because this room is too small. And basically, our testimony it comprises of um, really a long story for 23 years walking a journey. But today we're giving from Sydney and Melbourne. I think. Um, sorry, somebody can you mute? healing <laughs> Okay. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. So the host can mute to everyone. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I get distracted. Okay. So. Yeah, our 23 years journey uh, really to squeeze in 45 minutes today will be quite impossible as um, and many of you know that our testimony is a long and winding road. So today I purely just focus on uh, oh, my, uh, my husband um, walking this journey as, um, as this journey has been 23 years ago. So both of us are not believers. Me. Both of us are not uh, believers. And... Um, so when my husband first diagnosed cancer 23 years ago, I walked through a journey being a very staunch Taoist Buddhist and uh, giving him talisman, scorpion wine, and even sent him to lightning strike was um, informed by the, the master. So all this journey, I'm going to do this express speed forward because I won't want to go into the detail. Today it will be like a teaser to our real Christmas ultimate gift from God, where we will go into detail sharing our journey on my site. So today, I just want to really give glory to God for what he has done, because I want to share one something that, you know, for people like us walking this journey, not knowing Christ for the first 10 years battling cancer, and we found God through really through the fourth relapse of, um, of my husband's journey, being diagnosed stage four cancer. And um, um, I, I think somebody just keep coming in and I think it's Galaxy. Um, can you mute? <laughs> because, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, so basically, um, you know, it has been quite a long while. And then uh, basically my journey is really walking as a non-believer, walking through first 10 years without knowing God. And Tony was having relapsed five times uh, through the whole journey, but we found God. Um, on the fourth relapse for Tony, he practically died on the operating theater and um, a coma and, and the doctors pronounced him dead. And that's where God showed up. When a lot of times when we face challenges in life, especially even now, right? Even COVID. For me, because of the journey the Lord has pulled us through, COVID is like creating a lot of fear in us. And I pray that today our sharing Will really demonstrates God's power, God's grace. Because as a lot of people, I mean, until today, I'm still not vaccinated. My brother Raymond is here every day is telling me that you should go vaccinated. I, I say, yes, I am going to. But just that the journey we walk through, knowing God is in control of all things, our days are numbered. And I think it's important to live with no fear, despite whatever the consequences because I've been walking with my own husband every day, even until today. It is a borrowed day every day. We really don't know what next, what's tomorrow. But one thing I know is today, I want to share a scripture before I even share the testimony is Isaiah 43, 18, 19. That is the Lord say, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing new thing. Now it's spring up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and stream in the wasteland. This is exactly what the Lord has done for us. In our past, when we did not know God, we really truly walking in the desert land. Like only through the word of God, that is river streams coming up the desert. And that's where the clarity. Even now today, as you hear the testimony, I'm sure a lot of you can truly um, walk this journey knowing what the challenges, the, 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 not just health-wise, not just COVID, everything around us financially, work, family, being locked down, and all this um, challenging time of lo lostness, 
and confusion. But our Lord, only word of God, give us clarity. And that is my journey, walking with Tony, um, walking with God. Even 13 years ago, after the Lord resurrected Tony from dead to alive, giving me one verse, as a wife, when the doctor pronounced your, my husband's dead, so basically, I have to switch off the life support machine. So when I was given a life support machine, a, a consent form to switch off the life support machine, and that's where God spoke to me through John 11, 11. That is, my friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I am going to wake him up. Just one verse from the Bible. At that time, I was a very new Christian. I do not know how to pray. I do not know how to do a lot of things. All I know is I just keep singing praises in the ICU every day when my husband lying there like a vegetable state. And as he was facing multiple organs failure, that's where the doctors came to me. The minute he had multiple organs failure, the doctors say they have tried the best, but now really um, they can't do much. When all doctors fail, and when the, all doctors gave up, that's where God showed up in my life. And because of that one verse that I chose to believe, and the Lord gave us miracle. Can you imagine if the Lord spoke to me through the word, they say, my friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, I'm going to wake him up. And yet I do not listen. And yet my faith then was as small as a mustard seed. That was 13 years ago, 2008 at Bantai KL Bangsa. And I remember very clear that time my faith was really, really tiny bit like a mustard seed. But then yet the Lord gave me that verse that today, because of that mustard seed 13 years ago, it become a patch tree today that we can go around the world mm. to testify and tell everyone that God is real and Lord Jesus is the true living God. No one but him can resurrect a dead man to a life. And that's my journey. So I want to invite my husband to give him all the time to talk about how he encountering Jesus. And my husband is a very stubborn, stiff-necked, successful businessman who refused to, to believe God. But we both are, not just him, to be honest. Both of us are just living in a very worldly world, at the same time, just enjoying life. Don't know what life is all about until cancer hit us, until death was at our face. And something like that happened when you are in the darkest pit, just like Joseph, how Joseph in the darkest pit. And only Lord Jesus can raise it up from the darkest pit to where Joseph was. As today, that we will testify for the Lord and give him all the glory. I want to invite my husband to share how this stiff-necked, stubborn husband and can give up everything on the earthly treasure to just to work for the Father in heaven. That's why today's topic is saying my father's business, not the earthly father business. It is the heavenly father business because my father-in-law always never understand us. Every time asking his son to come back for a meeting, he said he don't have time. But when church invite him, he would take the next flight and flew back to KL and share the testimony. So this is my husband today after knowing the Lord. All to you, Tony. Yes. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tony here. As usual, before I start uh, our testimony, I, let's go to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord before we start. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together in this dark pandemic time. Only you know all things, Lord. Lord, as I share, Lord, let the Holy Spirit be among us. Anoint our lips so that every word that come out comes from you. Touch everyone's heart here today so that their heart be open to receive your life-giving words 
that gives lives to so many, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will guide us to bring the people that you have chosen, the people that you love, Lord, that they will come to know you, that you are the only one true living God and no one else. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So today, uh, my testimony is not about me, or not about my wife. The whole testimony is basically about our Lord Jesus. He's the one who gave me this story. And I believe the only reason why I'm here today, even being pronounced dead for already three days, ready to be put in a coffin, and yet this God, which I stubbornly turned away for 50 years, thinking that the world is the only way, following a Buddha way, and even some Taoist way that my wife's family leads me into. So this God showed me there is no other way but his way, which I stubbornly not follow, but to walk my own ways. As usual, as a businessman, your objective is to make money, profit, power, and the world's treasures. We don't know anything about heaven's treasures until God shows you. So I will go and uh, brief on some of the episode that happened to me, given the time. Okay, thanks. So I go back to 13 years ago because of my stage four cancer. The cancer had spread to my uh, brain and I needed emergency operation um, to remove that tumor. It was a 16 hour operation altogether. And in fact, two operation because the first one failed. I can hear nothing. And it's after this operation, I fell into a coma not being able to wake up. My body was connected to 12 tubes to a machine from America that shows every part of my organs and my brain is connected to this machine to tell the doctors if my brain is still alive, if my brain is still working after they cut one quarter of the brain off. So after the... Uh, Coma when they announced to my father to come in and my wife that uh, the machine tells them I have no response in my uh, brain and it's already confirmed I'm brain dead. So what they do is that they tell my wife to sign a form so that they can close this case because they say, this is not the first case, they tell my wife, thousands of cases. And each time when the brain is dead and your husband's brain is already dead for more than three days, there's no way anyone can come back. You see, God allowed this so that these doctors at the end will realize the power of our living God. And so will I, who stubbornly did not realize our Jesus is the only living God. Amen. So after they announced me, they, uh, they, they put me next to the mortuary. <clears throat> mortuary are basically for dead people. And then while I was there next to the mortuary, with uh, all the doctors, uh, you know, just leaving me there because my wife refused to sign the form.
to them is a close case. Uh, basically, my wife is wasting their time. That's what they are thinking. So they just left me there. While there, now I will not able to produce for you when I was dead, what I saw. But I'm going to give you a glimpse of our awesome God, what he has shown me when I was confirmed dead. I mean, you must imagine this guy, the brain is dead. All the organs uh, which are connected to the machine say is non-functioning. So as a normal doctor, it's only obvious. This guy is basically dead. So when in my coma stage, while next to the mortuary, this is what I saw in my image. I'm going to show you a picture of what I see. The first one is what I see. It's like the sun after they announced me dead while still in that uh, bed, in that hospital bed. And I saw this vision. So to me, it's a shock. Why is the sun, in my mind, coming down to me? So then the sun that I see start descending down nearer and nearer to me. And I realize in that vision that given by God, that this sun is more than a sun. So I'm going to show you what happened to this sun. Raymond, can I have a second picture? The sun has changed its shape to this. And I realize it's a being. It's not just the sun. So I'm giving you a glimpse of what I see. How to when I was there, turn on my video. so that you could Stop. see don't know why. how our Lord does His work beyond our understanding. And after this picture, it comes down all the way, it descends all the way and stand on my right. So as now a person who is starting to come to terms and know this living God, I was saying to myself, what a shy God. How come it doesn't stand in front of me, but stand on my right? And doesn't even look at me eye to eye. Now that I know the Bible, then I realize in Exodus 33.20, God made it very clear. No one can see my face and live. You see, we don't realize how sinful we are and how holy a God we serve. And then there, I didn't realize God did not want me to die yet. So he stood on my right to speak to me. And I can tell you, the voice of our Lord is like the voice of thunder. And again, now that I know the Bible, the, if you want to know what the voice of God sounds like, you can go to chapter of Job 37, verse 4 and 5. It's like thunder, exactly like thunder. And as while in on the right hand side, still on the right, he said two words to me while I was there. The first one was, do not be afraid with thundery voice. Now I know why the Israelis people were so afraid when God speak to them from the mountain Sinai. Because his voice has thunder. Even when he speaks to me while I was dead, I can feel my body is trembling and 
vibrating because of the sound. That's the power of our law. So the first word he said is, while on the right hand side, do not be afraid. And then the second word comes. Remember this through thunder. Just imagine thunder talking to you. How fearful is that? You know, you will listen. Say, remember this. I will walk in front of you for the rest of your life. Of course, then I don't really read the Bible, so I didn't know that every word that came out from this God called Jesus at that time was actually already in the Bible. Do not be afraid was the exact word you can find in the verse John 6, 20. And then again, I will walk in front of you for the rest of your life. You can go to Isaiah 45, verse 2. So just these two words woke me up from my death. I mean, they announced me dead, you know, after the fourth day of no activity in my brain and all the organs are already shut down. And I, I believe the doctor get a shock of their life. I mean, it's... It's, it's uh, medically impossible for them because I woke up seven days later next to the mortuary. So to them, this is not normal. So the four doctors came rushing to my uh, hospital bedside to check what is happening. All they were saying is uh, ghosts. This guy is ghosts, you know. So to them, they are looking at something medically impossible. So this is our God. They allowed the four doctors to confirm I'm dead and show me all, all the organs are gone. The brain is already shut off totally. And yet he wakes you up seven days later so that this doctor cannot claim they are the one that revived me. And they had no choice but to say, must be God. Only God can do things like that when medically it's impossible. So from a stubborn Buddhist and a, a worldly businessman, I come with this encounter with this Lord God to show me Nothing is impossible with him, which is in Matthew 19, 26. God said, with man, this is impossible. But with him, everything is possible. I believe he wants to show me a stubborn cow like me who turned away from him for 50 years and even tell Christians that this God cannot be real. So he showed me, so Tony, you think I'm not real? Let me show you something so that you know, without doubt, I am the living God. Because I tell you in your life, if you still have a drop of doubt about this God, there is no way, and this God knows, there is no way you can commit your whole life and your heart to this God. Any doubt at all that he is the living God, you will have reservation. So he has done that to me so that for the rest of my life, I will never turn away from him. Because no God I know, the so-called God and idols, can bring back a person after seven days. Only God has the power of your soul. He directs 
where you go. He decides, you know. So for some reason, he wants me back here for to point you all just for one objective, to point you all that he is the one true living God. Now I'm going to show you a picture of how I look like when I was confirmed dead with 12 tubes from my body so that you could see in the hospital how I look like. Raymond, uh, picture three, yes. Uh, this is how I look like, you know, connected to a machine, which the doctor said the machine never lied to them. And you can imagine how, if you were the doctor there, how you felt looking at this body, you know, is a corner because they have operated on thousands of cases on the brain, brain surgeon. And I'm gonna show you, this comes from the MRI of a scan from the hospital, how my brain looked like after the operation so that you will also believe the power of the living God. This is how my brain looked like. As you can see on the right side, they already cut off that area of the brain. So the brain surgeon and all the doctors who were shocked, they actually brought machine to test my brain, to test my uh, organs, which the machine said already closed, already stopped functioning. So to their shock, the machine they brought say that my organs, they said the lungs, the kidney is working. To their shock, they were shouting to each other, you know, it's working, you know, and this is our God. So that even the doctors have no choice but to come to believe there is something way beyond science. Of course, God can use doctors and medicine for us. By the end, we never knew that everything that is healing us actually came from him. So after the doctors have seen all this, I got curious. I wanted to know because I was a strong Buddhist. I turned away from this God. And this God showed me by all this and an encounter with him. And I can tell you, once you have an encounter with this God called Jesus, you will never turn back. And he make it such a dramatic encounter that I will never be able to go back to my own ways. Because you must think of it. When you are dead, all the money, all the business you have has no meaning on earth. One, you cannot spend it. You can't buy Ferrari with your money. Two, whatever power you were holding on in this world has no more meaning to you because you are dead. So God is showing me, hello, Tony. Are you still looking for your worldly treasure? Because when you are gone, you can't use all this. But the treasure he's going to give us, which is in heaven, will never die, will never fade away. It's eternal. That's when we are gone from this world, we can still use that treasure. So after seven days when I woke up, the first thing I thought to myself is what an awesome God. I must get to know him. So the doctors, uh, the two doctors, one is an oncologist, one is the uh, brain surgeon who cut my brain. Uh, it's a top brain surgeon. He actually said to me that I have good news for you and I have bad news for you while I was in the bed. He said, the good news is that we confirm you dead with a non-functioning brain and you wake up. That is wonderful news for you. 
but I'm the brain surgeon. I can't lie to you. The bad news is I took out one quarter of your brain and that part of brain is all connected. Your body is all connected. So you will be a paralytic, even though now you are awake. I can't lie to you. You can't use your hand. You can't use your leg. You will be half functioning. Of course, my wife is crying at that time. You know, you get back your husband, but your husband is only one quarter functioning. Three quarter of the body is gone, you know. And he even, the brain surgeon said there are two things you must uh, realize. You will have very little memory. You probably can't remember your own wife. You can't remember your own father because that gray matter, that memory has been disturbed and cut off. And you have to live in a wheelchair. And he got me a wheelchair. And he said, this is not the first case I deal with. I cut thousands of brains. None of them can walk. So this wheelchair is for you to live in because you can never walk. That's all he tell me. So while in a wheelchair, hunger to know this living God, which I turned away for 50 years, I wanted to know why in the first place he called me. Two, what is this God about for a guy who doesn't understand about Jesus? So I went back, of course, in a wheelchair when they discharged me. It's true what he said. I couldn't feel my leg. I couldn't feel my hand. I was totally useless. The only thing I can do is my mouth can move, my eyes can move. And the four doctors are incredible. They brought my wife in front of me to test. The first test they do on me is, do you know this lady? So my wife was sitting, standing in front of me while I'm in the uh, hospital bed. So they point to her and say, do you know her? So I told the doctor, Doctor, if I don't know this lady, I will have my third operation. And this operation will be done by my wife. My head will be chopped off. So the brain surgeon laughed and said, oh, for sure, he has part of his memory. So, you know, they were trying to test if I even recognized my own wife. That's how bad the situation was. But God never shocked changes. When he called us, he also equipped you, even though you have a non-functioning body, he can use you. How incredible is this God? So I went back to my condo, where I'm living in a condo, in a wheelchair. The first thing I do is I speak to one or two pastors of my wife. I say, how do you come to know this God? All of them say the same thing. You must know the Bible, the words of this God. So while in a wheelchair, the only problem I have, I have a non-functioning hand. I have, my hand cannot move. My leg cannot move. Because I was declared a paralytic. Paralytic means basically you cannot use anything below your neck. So while in a wheelchair, I have two iron bar connected and with a flat form in the front. So I pray. I said, God, you are so incredible to show me who you are. Now I want to know you. And everyone say, I must read this Bible, which come from you, the words. The first prayer Nothing moved. I couldn't move my hand. I couldn't turn the Bible because I can't move my hand. A second one, I prayed. I said, Lord God, I need to know these words so that I will know your ways. Second prayer, nothing works. So the third one, I prayed. I said, Lord God, I truly need to know you 
for you are awesome as what you have shown me with the encounter that you have shown me. Now let me know you through your words. And nothing move after the third prayer except this is our awesome God. Only the last finger start moving. So I was able to use this finger to turn the page of the Bible because this God knows Tony, if can walk and can do functioning thing, he won't have time for my Bible. He will walk away after almost six months, one year in the hospital. The last thing he wanted to do is to sit down and read my Bible. So God allowed this so that I will become a very good boy, cannot go anywhere, cannot go shopping center, nowhere, sit down and start reading the Bible. So I finished the Bible with this finger in 30 days. Because when you are hungry and then you want to know this God, you go super speed. By the time I finish the Bible, the last page, which is Revelation, and I close the Bible with this finger, immediately as I close the Bible, I felt fire, fire on my leg. Of course, nobody else in the room can see the fire except me, because God allowed it. The fire on your leg, you can imagine you are in a wheelchair and you're on fire. You think you're on fire on the leg. What do you do? As human, it's natural. And I can even feel the heat in my leg, you know, with fire coming out. I jump up on my wheelchair. The moment I jump up, I was looking at left and right. How come I can stand up? Because the doctor, the brain surgeon confirmed I'm a paralogic a person who can never use the leg anymore, and the hand, of course. And I realized suddenly I can start moving my leg. And I start walking step by step, exactly like a baby. I mean, you can imagine when you cannot go toilet, you're always wearing a pampers. So exactly like a baby, wearing pampers, walking, Exactly like a baby, you know. And even sometimes have to drink liquid food because of my condition. So sometimes when God say, you know, when Jesus say that you have to be reborn again to come into my kingdom. I guess this is rebonding because I, I couldn't move. I couldn't do a lot of things, uh, walking like a baby, wearing pampers at that time. And God knew I needed it to change me totally. So today I can tell you why we say it's doing father's business because our business belongs to God, not to us. So you must imagine the day you die, nothing matters. All the power, all the money you have on this earth can do nothing for you because you are gone. But for some reason, and I know now very clearly, there's only one reason why he allowed me to come back, to tell everyone he is the living God, full stop. Why he chose a stubborn cow like me and a person who turned away for 50 years and even tell Christian people that he is not real. Then I realized that's our God. He always chooses the unexpected. Paul wants to kill Christian. So I'm one up against him because I don't want to go and kill Christian. I just go around and tell Christian, insult Christian, tell Christian, Jesus is not real. So he uses people who doesn't know him yet, but yet he knows the day you know him, whether you will change to become the man he wants you to be originally. So now my business is very simple is to bring people to come to know this living God. Even in my business, in my dealing, 
I share, you know, about him, about our living God. And he gave me a story that helps me to evangelize. I never tell people, hey, you must come to know Jesus. No, I just tell them the story and they get convicted. Why is that? I don't know. Only God knows. So he knows I needed this story to bring all the people he wants back to him. Because our Lord Jesus did not die at the cross just for me. He died for everyone so that your life be redeemed and you'll be safe. And only through him will your life be safe. And God made it very clear for us. I mean, you must remember when I was in the hospital, I actually tell the pastor who came and prayed for me, I said, don't pray for me. God, I don't know your God. But yet this God knows when you speak from your heart. And I can tell you, when every doctor tells you, you may not come back after the operation. You will only speak from your heart. And God made it clear in Jeremiah 29, 13. God said that if you speak with all your heart, means you come to me with all your heart, I will answer you. Meaning, it's not I may answer you, I will answer you. Jeremiah 29, 13. So God is very clear in what he's saying. So even though I didn't know him then before the operation, I was seeking who is God. And I told the pastor, the day I see this God of yours, not only will I be his people, meaning I become his children. At that time, I didn't know what I meaning by God's children. But I said, not only I will become a Christian, I will not be an ordinary Christian. But I didn't know that it means going around the world, telling people with one objective, that Jesus is the living God. Now, uh, Raymond, how much time do I have left? It's 2.02, 02, and uh, you can go on a little bit if you want, but generally we stop around this time. Okay, I'm, I'm finishing anyway. Because um, if you want, you guys want detail, you can go to uh, Google and then uh, check out our YouTube, which has been going around the world anyway. Oh, I mean, that's, that's the objective of this. Yeah, December, on, we could, yeah. Yeah, December 2nd. Look up for the... Yeah, also two. this, uh, I think, yeah, one more. So this is like a teaser for you guys that how this God works. Mm. Of course, after walking with this God for a number of years already, I learned he has his own ways. Don't expect him to follow your ways. I mean, five years ago, you know, the cancer came back to me. After going around the world to talk about this God, so my wife said, how come? How can this God give you cancer again? But what we always never understand is his way is opposite of what we think. So five years ago, when the cancer came back on the, on the right side of my face, the doctor told me, unless I treat, told my wife, your husband will die, surely die, because they took out a piece of the cancer and told me exactly what cancer this is. And it's a cancer that's aggressive. It grow double the size every six months to cover the whole face, and therefore you cannot breathe. Your nose will be totally covered. And... Before this thing happened, before I knew I had cancer because I have yearly scan, eight months before, I actually have three verses from the Lord, three times, not three verses, verses from the Lord. It comes from two chronicles, Old Testament, two chronicles, 20, 15 to 17. In 15, it says, a battle is coming to you. In 17, Stand still and watch me deliver you 
out of this. So I learned when I walk with this God, when he give you three times, it's always very, very important. He will not give you three times unless it's a confirmation by him. So I was saying as a human, is it possible that I can not treat this cancer? I mean, how can it be possible? You know, it's growing every time the doctor says it's growing. But one thing he assured me, this God, is that every time I go every six months to test, the doctor is very surprised. He said, hey, this is a very aggressive cancer. But every time I check, your cancer never grew. It's 3 cm, it maintains 3 cm, never grow bigger, you know. So he said, um, we don't know, we never seen a cancer like that, so aggressive. So what God is telling me is, hello, this battle doesn't belong to you. I can even tell a cancer to stop. That's the power of God. So I didn't treat, you know, for three years. And of course, my wife was very worried. My son came to me and said, Dad, because he's a worship leader in a Presbyterian church. He said, Dad, very simple. I have to send you to the asylum. Asylum are people that have gone mad. He said, you, you, are, you need brain, you need mad treatment, not cancer treatment. There's no such thing in this world, my son said. When you have cancer, you go treatment. Even my worship leader, which worshiped with me, he had cancer, they went for treatment and also died. You are telling me no treatment, just wait. No such thing. You need to go for madness treatment. So God already warned me that, can you drink this cup I'm about to give you? So I didn't know this is a test from God because after sharing for seven years around the world, if you look at the Bible, everyone he chose are tested, including Paul, including Abraham. I'm glad I don't have to face what Abraham faced, which is to kill your own son. Mine is my own life, you know. And so after my uh, God tell me that the one that you're going to face is your own wife and your own son. Because they are not going to believe this, you know. Of course, um, out of nowhere, after three years, I get a call from the Australian government. I mean, you know, what's the population here? You know, 25, 30 million. And why choose a Chinaman like me in Australia? So he wanted me to go for a, what do you call a trial, a drug that's not approved by the government yet. And the reason why he chose my name, he said, you are the one, the only, in fact, one of the only one we could find, a person who has survived stage four, final stage cancer, more than five years. In fact, you, you survived more than 20 years. We need a guinea pig like that. So are you willing? I already know when God asked me to wait and this thing come to you, you already know, because after experience with God, you will know how he works. The unexpected. I mean, Australian government, we got time for you, you know. And the 20 doctors involved, they said it will take 12 months before we know any result. Testing after testing, because a drug that has never been used in this world. MK1248, that's the name of the drug. And after three months, 20 doctors around me, the first question they asked me, tell us the truth, which planet you come from? We have never seen a case. And then this drug, we knew, your cancer disappeared after three months. So how can it be? You must be alien. I told them, you see, this is an opportunity God gave you, the 20 doctors there. Yes. I'm actually alien. I come from the planet of Jesus. You want to know why this happened to me? You come to Jesus. Then you know why. So 
opportunity always open. And by the way, you know, even the brain surgeon that cut my head, he became a Christian because he knows his own bare hand took my brain up. How can this guy walk and talk to me like that? So I told them, come to Jesus. Then you know why. I don't even need to explain. Come to believe in him. And then you know why the impossible can happen. Because God made it clear, you know, in Matthew 19, 26, with him, everything is possible. Okay, I think I should end it here and then pass it on to my wife. This is a teaser for you guys, like an advertisement. Yeah? Okay, and I pass it to my wife who wants to do a worship song. No, I just Thank want you. to, yeah, just want to wrap up. I know it's a very short time and we just kind of skip here and there. But I think um, what we want to kind of share the message is as this journey walking 23 years, seeing on my own husband fighting cancer five times, especially the last one he shed, when he chose not to do anything. Every day you go home, there's blood stain everywhere. Every morning you wake up, there's blood stain on the pillow. And yet, I look at him, I say, wow, what kind of faith is that? And this is the journey for me as a caregiver, as a wife, watching a loved one suffering, but yet cannot do anything. But then yet God put me in this waiting room, God's waiting room. That's where God will refine us. While we are waiting, actually, we let the Lord be the porter. And that's where when you're suffering, you are the clay that God will mold you, transform you to the person he has chosen to give glory to his name. And that's my journey. To me, it's really as a caregiver, watching a loved one suffering for 23 years, not knowing when is the day, but the Lord knows the day. The Lord has numbered the days. So my response to a lot of us today, whether you are believers or not believers, I was not a believer. I was totally staunch Taoist and Buddhist. So was my husband. So if I have one minute to share my husband's um, testimony, practically is my husband died as a Buddhist and woke up as a Christian. How awesome this God is. I don't even have to preach to him. But at the same time, I also see God using this whole journey. The first 10 years, not knowing God, walking in total darkness, praying to all kinds of di di uh, idols, you name it. We, we went to India, we went to Thailand, whoever say this monk is good, that is good. We just take a flight and we're just there. But then yet, the Lord allowed us to walk through darkness. Why is that? Then the second half of our 13 years, because this journey, 23 years of walking cancer, stage four, the second 13 years, we also walk through cancer, but encountering God, knowing God is in the boat with us, just like how Jesus can come to see, but just by one word, by his word, the power of God's word is so powerful. That is a journey we all riding the boat with the Lord. No matter how stormy the weather is, no matter how challenging, even the word of God is the one that will give clarity. That's why at the beginning, I share the scripture that Isaiah 43, 18, 19. As we, there are new things. He's for, forget about the former things, which is our old lives. When you found the Lord, when the Lord found you, He's going to give you a new life, a life full with abundance. Even though walking with cancer, we still have abundant life. And that is this God. But of course, it's a never busy, easy. It's just like in the word of 2 Corinthians 4, 8, say, we are hard pressed on all sides, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down but not destroy. I'm sure a lot of us can relate this with COVID, not just have to be cancer. Walking this journey with COVID for the last two years. Out there, COVID is in the air. A lot of people are living in fear. 
run away and, and trying to wear masks. That's a natural thing. But then yet at the same time, I look at it, I say, Lord, you have prepared Tony and myself because cancer cell is in his body, already in his body. It's just any time the cancer can just be activated as and when they want. But what do we do? So every day, my husband just read the word of God. It's only the word of God has the ultimate power to really heal us and, and really remove the fear. It's really turn the fear into faith. So today, I want to share with many of us on this afternoon. You know, I don't want you to go away not knowing this amazing, amazing God. Without this God, I don't think I can last 23 years. I'll probably throw in my towel and just, just say, that's it, surrender, you know. But then yet, God has never given up on us. Because despite how many wrong things, all the de detestable things we have done, praying to idols and, 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 and doing all the occult practices, I have a master, I even sent my husband for lightning strike in the, you know, on the rooftop, on my mother's rooftop. We will share that in our Christmas uh, um, uh, thing. And it's just so many things that we walk through. And I look back and I have a good reflection and look back, especially during this two years COVID. Why God allow all this? But only God can turn every curse to what the enemy trying to rob away from us. In return, God give us a blessing. If it's not because of cancer, I don't think me and my husband will be able to be where we are today. Probably we're still living a very worldly life, enjoying all this very not meaningful thing and, and very worthless life. But then yet, why God chose us? So this is something that, especially just now you heard my husband say, on the fifth relapse, he refused to have treatment. Can you imagine a wife every morning wake up and looking at the blood stain everywhere, not just the bed, the floor, everywhere is 24-7, he's flowing the, the nose. So I asked myself, how do I ask the Lord, actually? I, yet I trusted what the Lord shared with my husband, 2 Chronicles 2015. The battle belongs to God. But at the same time, I told my husband, God also uh, have sent good doctors, oncologists. So I was trying to, persuade my husband to go for treatment. But my husband said, no, the battle belongs to the Lord. Obviously, it's not a normal way of looking at things, but I just admire his faith. And during this journey, that's where I, my faith was shaken. For someone who has witnessed God's power in the death resurrection of my own husband, and yet my faith is shaken. Can you imagine many more out there who doesn't know the Lord? who has not witnessed God's power, and I can go through that bottom of the pit again and to say, Lord, why do I have to see this? Where are you? Are you there? And that's my question for those two years. But because of that, I have lots of tears in the closet, of course. Not, I don't want to shake my husband's faith. So I was hiding in the closet and just pray. I say, Lord, you got to do something. I can't sleep every day. And the Lord gave me one song. This is a song I wanted to later on to do a closing. And at the same time, after that, I will do a closing prayer for all of us. And this is a song the Lord gave me. He said, my dear child, you have walked this journey for 23 years. Yes, it is storms. Yes, it's hurricane. Yes, it's always the darkest valley. But the Lord assured me, it is through the storms of life that he has built us up as a spiritual giant for him. And it is the storms of life that I would teach you how to dance with the storm, not to fight with the storm, because the Lord Jesus is in there in the storm with us. How can we fear? That's a message the Lord gave me. And when I was struggling in my deepest pit, the Lord gave me this song. This is a song, it's written, say, composed by Ashley, but the real author is really Lord Jesus Christ because this is a Mandarin song. The Lord just downloaded to me 45 minutes when I was having my business trip from K, um, Singapore to KL. I like to share this song and uh, I hope this song will minister to you. This is the same song has woken up somebody from 
a hospital too in coma. And the Lord told me, use this song and minister to many. For those who need, who are broken hearted, who are broken in um, family, this song is a restoration song that it will minister to many of us. Uh, can we play that song, Samuel? Thank you. Then I will do a closing after that, a closing prayer. The title of this song is Dancing in the Storm. Lord Jesus said, I taught you how to dance with the storm. You don't have to fight the storms of your life because he is our refuge and our tower. Come Everybody got to hear that some people didn't, I suppose. It's okay. I, I you can post a YouTube up there. <laughs> it's it's on yeah. YouTube anyway. Yeah, I it's totally on YouTube. Yeah, I just want. Yeah, I think yeah. is. Uh, I want to do a closing for everyone. I know the times is up. Uh, can I just do a quick closing prayer for yes. everyone of us today? Yes. Yes, dear Father God, I know you're so real in our life, and after sharing this testimony, Lord. We can see your light shine so bright even when we have been walking in the darkest path of our journey and lord only through you lord your word of god that will shine so bright no matter how dark the journey may be for many of us here today are facing so many challenges especially during COVID, family problems family financial works children and everything illnesses health but lord as you as we can see the story have returned in our life that to show your glory in every situation no matter how dark the journey may be as your word Isaiah 43 
that you you promise that no matter how challenging the journey is, when you walk through the fire, we will not be consumed by that fire. When we walk through the waters, Lord, you promise that we will not be drunk. Because Lord God, you are with us. You are carrying us in your hand. Because the assurance that Lord, you will bring us through no matter whether the darkest of belly, but you will bring us up to the mountain top so that your word will be preached. Your name will be glorified. Your name will be honored because you are our rock, our tower of refuge. In times like this, such as this, many of us who knows you can get lost. What the more for many of those who doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that, Lord, today, for those who does not know you, will come to know you, Lord, just through our own journey, Lord. It is painful. It is suffering. But then yet, Lord, it is your promise of your word that is only through the suffering, Lord, you can mold us, transform us, because we are stubborn and stiff-necked. Without going through this journey, Lord, we will never be ready to be molded by you because you are the potter. We are the clay. You're always our rock, our deliverer. Mm -hmm. Our Lord of the Lords and Kings of the Kings. Lord, we just want to give thanks to you for today's fellowship, today's thank you for your presence in our life. I think I also pray that Lord, you would touch many lives here today who doesn't know you, who want to come to know and more about you, to accept you as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ashley. And Brother Tony, it was a real blessing. What a powerful, powerful testimony of God working in our lives today. Um, because of time, it's almost 2.26, so we'll open up for a few questions. Please unmute. We're going to take it only uh, live, so you unmute and you can ask your questions. We might not have time to go through the chat. Uh, the other thing is, perhaps, if you feel led, uh, Brother Tony and Sister Ashley, is to have an altar call. If anybody would like to know this Jesus, this resurrection power that you can find in the Lord Jesus, raise your hand and then we can pray for you to know the same Lord. Or you might be going through a difficult patch yourself. So please let us know. Okay. Yeah, we will stay back to 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 help to do the I mean to say the sinner's prayer with them if they are keen. Yes. Uh, brother Samuel, yep. if I can. Oh the while you are preparing your questions, you want to raise your hand, put it in the chat box, so so can. But I would ask uh, brother Lorenzo Horiselli, are you there? Uh, yes. Could you could you pray for Tony and Ashley? Yes, thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Then we close. Hallelujah. Oh, let us see what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, precious Savior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we walk so many roads, and you have let them walk such a hard road, but they have walked it with grace, and they have walked it with courage, and they have walked it because your Holy Spirit walks with them. In this day, Lord, anoint their feet anew anew that the path you have ahead of them has not this same journey over and over repeated, but a new journey, a healthy journey. And we speak that, Lord, that though they have this testimony, you give them even greater testimony of overcome, of the power of your love, of belief in you, and Lord, we always hear the expression of a fountain. These people are more than fountains. For the Lord says, where you walk, every step that you have taken, you have brought the Holy Spirit and taken that ground. Every step, wherever you have walked, wherever you have spoken, your words have been his word. And they have also claimed that ground. For you are his you are his children, you are his people, and he blesses you anew again and again and fills you 
And God, as he said to his son, Jesus, he says of you, these are my children. I am well pleased. And he blesses you this day. Be not afraid of anything. Be not afraid. Look up. Just follow that light straight ahead. It is him right in front of you all the time. You have yielded your body and your soul and your spirit to our dear Lord. Thank you. And he walks ahead of you with every step. Bless them this day and everything, Lord. Thank you for their wonderful, wonderful courage and testimony for all of us. Thank you, dear Jesus. I believe for my neck. I believe for those things. Thank you, dear Jesus, because of them. You live in them. They are alive. Amen. 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 Amen.